In this video, we'll be discussing the keyword self, and specifically we'll be focusing on how self relates to properties. Inside of methods, meaning that we would have to be inside of an implementation file or a .m file, you have access to the implicit local variable self. What does this mean? Well, it means that we can access methods and properties we declare in our header file. Let's start with properties. If you think back to our use of self in a code coalition mini, we were accessing our text field and our label, which we were hooking up from our view to our header file. The self here was referring to the view controller class, and thus we were referring to an instance of our view controller. We use the self keyword to access our properties that we had declared in our header file. Let's use dog.m for a few examples on accessing properties with self. So just to give us a quick example, I can go ahead and go into the void bar method, and I can write self.name. I can set this equal to new value. And I can also do self.breed, and I could change this as well. However, what would happen here is every time we called bark, the instance of our dog that was calling this method would have its properties updated. And this isn't great functionality because we wouldn't expect the name of the breed to change when we called the method bark. So let's specifically create a method called change breed that will allow us to change the breed dynamically. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our mbfdog.h file, which is where we declare new methods. And I'm going to write a method called change breed to werewolf. And notice I'm also adding the void, and this is our method name, change breed to werewolf. As we learned before, let's copy this entire line of code. So subtraction side void all the way to the semicolon. And I'm going to use command C to copy it. You could also two finger tap, assuming you have that set up on your trackboard, trackpad, and you could go to copy. So we're going to go to mbfdog.m and below our method, because we can't declare methods inside of other methods, I'm going to add my code here and I'm going to add two curly braces. And we now have a method defined that we understand will change the breed of our dog to a werewolf. So let's go ahead and implement this method. And we can simply say self.breed is equal to, and we can say werewolf. So let's go back to mbfviewcontroller.m and use this method change breed to werewolf. So I'm going to add an NSLog statement inside of my view to load method here. And remember that percent at sign expects an object, so we're going to pass it my dog.breed, and it should print out St. Bernard here. And then I'm going to log again after I change my breed so you guys can see the change in our breed for our my dog. So I'm going to write my dog, and I'm going to call the new method I just created, which was change breed to werewolf. And I'm going to NSLog. And we'll do my dog.breed again so we can see the change in our breed. So, what this is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to abstract away uh, the functionality of our breed or changing our breed to our mbfdog.m file. We could also just overwrite our breed dynamically here by saying my dog.breed and set this equal to new value like lab. So, I can nslog this as well. But the point is, if we're accessing our property in our .m file that was defined in our associated .h file, we use the property self. If we access that property in a different class, we must first create an instance of that class like we did with our mbf dog object, and the variable name for that object was my dog. Then using the variable name, we can use our dot notation to access that property. So I've shown you two different ways we can change the breed of our dog. We can either choose to do it in the .m file of mbfdog using the self keyword, or we can access the property directly by asking our variable object to update its value or attribute. 